What about the? I mean, you described yourselves as uh, yourself as being mm -hmm. uh, on the margins, or at least uh, mm -hmm. you were on the margins. Maybe now because people are realizing I totally the reality. I totally agree with that. Um, but. What about the intellectual circles? What mm -hmm. about the uh, you know the people who ought to be writing about the truth, who ought mm -hmm. not to have any kind of links to any kind of political mm -hmm. or economic kind of agenda mm -hmm. or interest? Are those circles widening? Are those circles yeah, uh, I, expanding know, further than they were? You could see the reaction to the Mearsheimer and Walt book, the book mm -hmm. by the University yes. of Chicago yes. professor and the Harvard University mm -hmm. professor. You know, with all. Uh, giving them all the credit they deserve, I think it's highly unlikely that they would have gone out on a limb like that yeah. were they not aware that there was an audience out there waiting to listen. Mm -hmm. uh, and they wouldn't have gotten from the most prestigious uh, publishing house in the United States, Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux, yes. whose their list includes the main, the leading American Jewish authors. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have got a $750,000 advance, which is a huge amount by yes. American yes. standards. Uh, were the publishing house not aware that there is an audience? Same thing with Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter is a decent individual, as far as one can tell from afar, but he's both a decent individual and a politician. Yes. I don't think he would have gone out on the limb with a book like that yeah. unless he knew there's an audience waiting to hear it. Mm. Uh, the climate's changing. Mm. I mean, you're now touring the UK, and mm -hmm. uh, here in, in, in the United Kingdom, we've mm -hmm. had. Um, either the Union of University Lecturers or the such really raise the profile of what's going on in Palestine, mm -hmm. um, vote on boycotting uh, Israeli universities mm -hmm. and the such until uh, things progress and, and, and until Israel mm -hmm. realizes its obligations towards the Palestinians and the international community. Mm -hmm. um, w would it be fair to say that, that maybe uh, intellectual and academic circles within the United Kingdom are a little bit further down the line than their American peers, or is that a little bit unfair? No, I think that's true. Uh, there is, uh, there are elements of w the Mearsheimer and Wall book which I agree with, and there are elements which I don't. Uh, but on the question of there's a powerful Jewish lobby in the United States, they call an Israel lobby because they mm -hmm. want to be politically correct. There's a powerful Jewish lobby which stifles dissent and discussion on the question of Israel Palestine. Uh, that's accurate, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have nearly the kind of power here that it has in the United mm -hmm. States. Uh, so there is a difference, and you, you could see it in the press coverage. Uh, I wish if you had an opportunity to just read to your listeners the Washington Post editorial yesterday and what, mm -hmm. happened, uh, the, what happened in Gaza. Yes. Uh, they write in the editorial, the lead sentence is, Hamas is obviously trying to destroy the peace process. That's, that was the meaning of what happened mm -hmm. in Gaza. Yes. And then they go on to say that Hosni Mubarak how dare he allow this illegal break-in in Egypt? Mm -hmm. And then they quote Mubarak as stating, well, the reason I did it is because, quote, the Palestinians are starving. And the Washington Post, literally, the Washington Post writes, what do you mean starving? There's no starvation. The only reason they went to Egypt is because prices are lower. And, 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 and then you compare that with coverage here, yeah. I mean. The coverage, I read it all yesterday. Okay, the Times put it on page 39. Yeah. Uh, the Independent puts it on pages 2 and 3. But they would never say things like that. Mm. I'll tell you the truth. I was reading it, the Washington Post. I couldn't be sure whether it was a joke. Because, you know, sometimes in the yes. web now, people do parodies. That's right. I didn't know whether it was a joke. Mm. Mm. I mean, that's the level of coverage in uh, the media in the U.S. But even they are having trouble because, say what you want, we know 99.9% .9 of humanity mm. identified with those Gazans mm. who are breaking out of jail, mm. you know. And, and amongst and, those, the Americans, uh, you think? Yeah, you can't not see it. Mm. Mm. You know, how, mu how much, you know, there's that famous song from the 60s by Bob Dylan, how many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he just doesn't see? Yeah. There's a limit. And when you see all of those swarms of human beings, mm. then all of the Israeli propaganda begins to dissipate. Mm. And you see the reality that Israel is caging in these people like rats in a sewer. Mm. You know, it's losing. Mm. It's losing in part because it's gotten so 
berserk and reckless. You don't do something like that, mm. what they tried to do in Gaza. Uh, a number of uh, people commented on what had happened in, in Gaza over recent mm -hmm. weeks mm -hmm. and the, 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 the subsequent kind of outpour of people. Mm -hmm. in the, and uh, a number of people came up with, with, with uh, a few quite interesting remarks. Firstly, mm. that um, what Israel has to come to terms with is the fact that people who are um, without arm, without mm. arms, without uh, weapons, uh, can actually break through borders and barriers. And that's mm -hmm. something, whilst they did this, you know, th th this time, you know, through the Rafah kind of mm -hmm. passage in, into, into Egypt, it could very well happen elsewhere, i.e. people pressure uh, mm -hmm. is something to, to contend with. And, and secondly, the, I mean, the question as to why it was, and how is it that seemingly and apparently mm -hmm. intelli intelligent people in Israel couldn't foresee you know, the, the kind of end result of what their, their policies in Gaza. Uh, you described because Israel earlier as being uh, a state in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a form of craze or the such. Right. Is, is that it? Or? Well, because they confuse the leadership of the Palestinians, which is completely corrupt and mm. incompetent. They confuse it with the people. Mm. And this is the second time they made that error. They made that error through the 1980s, uh, and then the first intifada happened. Mm. Each time the Palestinian people seize their destiny into their own hands, mm. it throws Israel into complete confusion mm. because they're used to dealing with these, this very thin layer of corrupt leaders mm. who are fairly easy to manipulate and who aren't very intelligent. And the Palestinian people, like all people, in particular people under uh, enormous pressure, they have a capacity for creative thinking and figuring out ways to break free from this nightmare that's being uh, imposed on them. And now they have the second, it's a second time. Each time the Palestinian people seize their own destiny into their own hands, they make progress. Whenever they invest their hopes and their destinies into these idiot phenomena called the peace process and their Annapolis and their Oslo and this and that, the suffering just increases and the dismemberment of their country mm. uh, continues apace. One hopes, one hopes, the Palestinians will again seize the lesson that they seized in 1987. Mm. I'm not a religious person, but I like that phrase, God helps those who help themselves. Yes. You have to act on your own. They detonated the wall in Gaza. The next step should be they have to break down the wall in the West Bank. Mm. They have to do it collectively because they have the right to do it. It's mm. not me that says it's the right, and it's not even higher justice that mm. says it's the right. They have a legal right. Yes. The World Court ruled in July 2004, the highest judicial body in the world ruled. The wall that Israel is building in the occupied Palestinian territories is illegal under international law. The wall has to be dismantled and Israel has to pay compensation. That's the law. Mm. That's the highest judicial body in the yes, world. Yes. It ruled that 14 to 1. The only dissenting vote was the American vote. Mm. The British vote, Judge Rosalind Higgins, she voted, she voted with the majority. Mm. And that means the Palestinian people have the legal right to take some hammers and picks, mm. one million Palestinian people, go to that wall and start knocking it down. Mm. If they took that initiative, they'd make more progress for their cause mm. and all of these ridiculous theatrics called the peace process. Mm. And one hopes that that's going to be the lesson that they got from the last several days. Mm. What do you think the thinking is or the level of awareness is within Israel? They're probably panicking now. Because they think that things aren't as under control as they want, exactly. or I mean, isn't there a, an element within Israeli society that thinks that thinks that you know we're digging our own graves here? I mean, isn't there, there that kind of element? There is an element that thinks that, but the problem is, even those who want to extricate themselves from the mess they're creating, they constantly want to do it on their terms yeah. and with them in command. Mm. They can't. They can't accept dealing with Arabs as equals and having to jointly make a decision. Mm. They'll tell, they can tell the servant, you get a day off. 
but not to meet them as equals. And that's their kind of love-hate relationship with Hezbollah.